full of confidence. I mean, off the baseline, she's been so powerful. She's been coming into the net more than we've ever seen her before. A lot of that, of course, uh, is due to her, her new coach, Mike Estep, who has been trying to give her more of an all-court game. I've got to really think that if uh, Sanchez Vicario plays as well as she's been playing and Groff overnight isn't able to change what's been going on the last couple of days, it's going to be Arancha winning. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because that's a kind of a gutsy call, the number one player in the world, Steffi Groff. And by the way, as I said, she's already still in line for another grand slam. And who'd bet against that? Let's go down to Pam Shriver with some more thoughts on the subject. Pam? Well, these two players have played six times before. Their most memorable match, of course, was last year's French Open final when Steffi Groff lost that match to Arantxa in three tough sets. What's interesting is that yesterday's semifinal performances were much like the semifinal performances in Paris, where Steffi Groff struggled in her semifinal, and Arantxa sanchez Vericario easily won hers. Now, they've played twice since then. At Wimbledon, Steffi Groff won in straight sets, and then at Pan Pacific Championships in Tokyo about two and a half months ago, Steffi Groff easily beat Sanchez Vicario in straight sets, and that was the last match Groff played before breaking her thumb. Cliff? The Dungeon Long Championships women's singles final match from Amelia Island Plantation, Amelia Island, Florida, is being brought to you by Bausch and Lom. And it's for two months. But for about three weeks, uh, I didn't do anything, nothing, not even running, and I missed it. I missed it a lot, and I felt awful not doing anything. So when I started jogging on the beach a little bit and uh, playing with the, with the left hand, uh, it was all right. I mean, I tried to keep, to keep in shape like that. Steffi's next public appearance wasn't on the courts, but in the Tony pages of Vogue magazine's April issue. It's not really natural. I'm never not really that glamorous or that different for myself. So uh, it was also a fun group there. And I enjoyed it a lot and we had a nice time there, a lot of fun. I had a lot of requests before and I never really got the time to do it. So um, I had some time off in December last year and I did it then. So I have a lot of requests doing some more. And it was, I, I enjoy fashion and I like, I like photography, so I'm, I'm sure getting more in would like to do some more. Groff's comeback this week was greeted with warm applause and healthy curiosity. Could she recover from a serious injury and immediately get a grip on her remarkable game? So far, it seems that answer is yes. But the question is, what did she miss in all the time away? Only the playing, only loving matches with everything I missed. Going out there to, to concentrate, to... to to have an opponent opposite side and to get pushed to somewhere. Only the playing is what she missed. It's an interesting comment, isn't it? It makes you realize that, of course, it's a lot of glamour out there, but it is also tough to be on the road all the time. Arantxa Sanchez on the left and Steffi Graf on the right. Born in Brühl, West Germany. That's where she still lives. She is 20 years old, having done as much as she's done already. The last, uh, let's see, seven or eight Grand Slam titles, a remarkable effort from her. She should have, or came very close to winning the Grand Slam last year, and there is Arantxa Sanchez Vicario from Barcelona. Well, she, uh, Steffi said in, in, in the end there that she wanted to, she missed the competition, she wanted to get pushed. She's been pushed around the last couple of days, and the, in fact, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario was the last woman to beat her. That was way back at last year's French Open. Matter so it could happen again. I, I honestly feel that can happen today. She has won 56 matches in a row now since that loss to Sanchez Vicario. But what, what amuses me about uh, San Sanchez Vicario, as you look at some of her outstanding record, and of course Clay is her best uh, surface by a long way, is how confident she is, <laughs> you know, and in such a delightful kind of a way too. I mean, she says, I think I can win. <laughs> And she means it, and of uh, course, as the real champions in our sport always say, they don't go on the court there unless they really feel like they can win. She undoubtedly does feel that she can win. Steffi Graf, of course, as we said, 56 matches. The last loss was to the lady that she's playing against here today. Um, how is she playing? Well, she started out so well here in this tournament. By the time I got here, after she'd played two matches, everyone was saying, well, she is uh, not only as good as she was when she hurt herself, but probably even better. And then, of course, that all changed. Again, my feeling is that on this surface is not her favorite surface. It's not her best surface because the ball on the slow clay could get up. Kind of I would actually water. say this is her least favorite surface, green clay. Yeah, I go along with that. First ball, best of three sets, $17,000 at stake. 15 love. I tell you that. 
I'm certainly not hoping this happens, but I should tell you that the weather bureau is saying that there are thunderstorms in the area and that we may see some here in about 40 minutes. I hope that's wrong. 30 love. But, uh, Pam, it is kind of humid, isn't it, today? It's very humid. It's been humid all day long. And if it does rain, it'll be the first time all week. 40 love. How Groff hits her first serve in this match is very important. She's going to want to have some freebies in this match. Game Groff, first game. First game, Steffi Groff, the number one player in the world. It's one game to Her first service game at Love, her foot speed is, has, has been what's kept her through these last couple of bad matches, but she has been off form. And more than anything else, there is no intimidation factor against someone like Arantxa, who has already beaten her before, as in fact, in, in the biggest clay court tournament in the world. So when you play against somebody who dominates your sport, one is, well, uh, I just can't beat her. The other one is, I've got nothing to lose. And there's more of the latter. There's probably a little bit of both in, in the heart of everybody that plays Steffi. But more of the latter in this young lady's heart from Barcelona. That's the first point for Sanchez. Drop it one the first six. So and that might loosen up Arantxa a little bit, Pam. In yesterday's match against Sabatini, Arantxa Sanchez only lost eight points in the final eight games. I had never seen such tremendous clay court tennis. Sabatini is not easy to win eight straight games against on clay. Yeah, but Pam, weren't you disappointed with how Gabriella looked? She looked really slow. And, I mean, at four all in the first set, you know, from then on in, to me, it looked like she, she just didn't give it her all. And I had, I had picked Sabatini to win this whole thing, so boy, was I wrong. 30 all. Second game. A few unforced errors flowing from the draw for racket. Boy, we've seen a lot of that in this last two matches that she's played. and Marissa and her mother on on the right. Sanchez Vicario. By the way, you heard uh, in the interview that Pam Schreiber did with her after her match yesterday, she calls him Step uh, for some reason. <laughs> the Spanish have typically saying yes, Step, and he says, well, that's what they call him in Spain, to Step. a concession perhaps to the heat Groff has put on a headband she didn't wear it all week but uh, we saw she changed uh, she changed shirts and skirts yesterday and her rackets four times for that matter so that wasn't a, a consequence of the heat She's really a tremendous lobber. Here she is off position, and she still is able to come up with, his, with what is a winning lob. Look at that. She got under and just scooped it up there. Graf was hoping, of course, that this was going to fall away and didn't really chase it down as much as she could have. She's got great feel for that, great range on her lob, Sanchez Vicario. Aaron, forehand, first point, third game, one game all, love, 15.
Arantxa is uh, very much a clay court specialist, but she, her new coach has really improved her net game, and her fighting spirit is what's so good about her. But her weakness is that second serve, which is attackable. She's been broken 10 times already this week. We'll see just what uh, Groff does against that serve of Sanchez, but she also moves beautifully. She can dance. Uh, these two, these are two of the best movers in the game out there. As this match progresses, it will be interesting to see if Steffi Groff doesn't change rackets. But today's racket sounds to me as if it's a little bit tighter, which might keep some of the balls that were flying the last couple of days, might keep them in. Good thought, uh, Pam. I think that's an, an important consideration. That'll be wide. Break point. That's what Borg used to do. He used to string his rackets very tightly, and then he'd flail away at them. And because they were so tightly strung, they would not fly on him. There was no kind of trampoline effect. And on these surfaces for graph, where the ball tends to fly some, that would be a good play. Tighter strings. Break point. That's, that was back in the days of wooden tennis. You know, he would string them at 80 pounds. If we have a look at that last shot from Groff. She had to sort of fade that into the corner and caught it. But uh, he strung them so tight that he'd be in an airplane and he'd have his he'd have his rackets in the overhead compartment and he'd hear ping, ping, and they'd be breaking at the altitude. His coach would have to hurry up and find the one so he'd be sure to restring them before they got to the tournament. That's a nicely done pass, and it's obvious that uh, Groff knows that Sanchez Vicario is going to be coming in when she gets the opportunity. It's something that it seemed Gabriela Sabatini never, uh, never was willing to face in that really lopsided match yesterday. You've seen Groff already make a few moves to the net. I think you're going to see some of that because that's an answer to somebody who's attacking you. I think you'll see a little more of that from Groff today for that reason. Game point. Oh, she covered the, she was able to cover the first one, but not the second. Easy passing shot for Groff on the second one. Two games to one on serve first set. Nice to have, wouldn't it, in your living room? It will be in the living room of one of these two great champions, either Steffi Graf or Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, and they take home a check as well. $350,000 first prize in the Bausch and Long Championships for this year. Total purse, by the way, excuse me. Total purse, three fifty. dollars And this year in women's tennis, we're competing for $23 million in prize money on the Kraft General Foods World Tour. too much she's waiting until she sees the moment to attack it took her a while this was a pretty good looking smash and of course Sanchez Vicari is going to chase down just about anything she can but she wasn't able to handle that one and it's interesting to see how much Groff is slicing off the backhand side when she's in full cry she comes over that ball
Mary, you mentioned at the top of the show how Steffi is going to have to play a tactically sound match, which is, of course, correct. And it's very seldom where she has to play such a fine tactical match because she usually just uses her power and just bashes away. So true. She's got so much game that she doesn't usually need strategy, does she? Sanchez Vicari, as you saw, lost to Graf last year here in the semifinal. As Ted Tinling would say, the great Ted Tinling of Virginia Slim, he said, it's the Big Bang Theory of tennis, Groff and Becker, you know, it's yuppie tennis, just hit, 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 and if it goes in, that's good, and if it goes out, well, just keep hitting it harder. You have to work on your, your <laughs> English accent somewhere. Anyway, that's what he says. I understand. Good stuff. 1542 break points for Groff. And since these two played here last year in the semifinals, uh, not only has... Sanchez Vicario won the French Open, but she also won the most improved player from the WTA. And that is why we're seeing her with a great chance to be oh. winning. Sanchez did more than just win it once, and she did something that no one, no one has ever been honored as Arantxa was. In 1988, she was uh, given the most improved award by her peers because she went from 47 to 18 in the world. In 1989, they again gave it to the same person, which is quite an honor. That's because she went from 18 in the world all the way up to five and won the French Open. So winning the most improved two years in a row? That's right, and they give it to her this year, she'd have to also get player in the year, of the year, wouldn't she? <laughs> That's right. How much more can you improve? Four spots. Of course, winning the only one championship, even if it is a French championship, she doesn't uh, do all of that for you. She had a very good year overall. As I said, she got the semi-final here last year against Graf. The Family Circle Cup the week before, she also lost to Graf. But she won in Barcelona over Helen Kelsey. Steffi Groff took a high forehand as it came to her, and instead of blasting away, she actually took a bit of pace off it, gave it a bit of lift, played it safe, which is, she was not doing that yesterday or against Bassett Seguso. She was just blasting. Over five million in prize money. must have to exercise such restraint to do that. I mean, that must be like telling your home run hitter to bunt, you know, which is what Peter Groff basically told her yesterday when she was struggling so much against Verova. And he told her to calm down and just keep the ball in play. I thought it was good advice at the time. 30-15. Heidi is, uh, is uh, the woman up front in the sunglasses. On the right. Game point for their daughter, Steffi, to go up 4-1. She's not, she's not doing much, but Sanchez is doing much less than she did yesterday. I don't think Arantxa is yet into this match, and she's quickly being hustled out of this first set. Here's a point for 4-1. 
And 4-1 it is. First set, one break is served in this first set. We'll be back in a minute. That's how things stand as of today. Steffi Graf, number one, then Navratilova, Sabatini, Silas, and Sanchez Vicario. But now let's see if, what happens if Graf wins today. So things change. She stays, of course, on top, followed by Navratilova. Then Silas is number three, and Sabatini, number four. And Sanchez Vicario, number five. And if Sanchez Vicario wins, there is yet another change. It'll be Graf, Navratilova. Then Vicario will be number three followed by Celis, and Sabatini will drop to five. No matter what happens today, yeah. in other words, Sabatini goes south. Yeah. Arancha can move way up. Of course, last year, Gabriela Sabatini not only won this tournament and got a lot of points for that, but defeated the number one and two players in the world. She beat Martina in the semis and then Steffi in the finals, and there's a lot of bonus points right there that she will lose after this tournament. explain to you quickly that the bonus points that Pam's talking about, you get bonus points if you beat players who are, who are highly ranked in addition to what you get for normally getting to the latter rounds of tournaments. Why is it important to be seated in the top? Well, if you're in the top four, for example, you can't play any one of the other uh, top three seated players in the tournament until the semi-finals. If you say five, you are guaranteed to play one, two, three, or four in the quarterfinals at least. Big difference. Oh, yeah. Good moving from Groff. It really was, because Sanchez was already at the net and starting to make her move. Groff had to come up with a pretty defensive backhand, but she was able to track down the reply at the net from Sanchez and flipped it cross court. I was happy with that one. That was a nice play, because Sanchez was trying to be the aggressor. Groff took it right away from her. This is break point for the third, second break of set. So Groff breaks again. It's five games to one. Are you surprised as I am, Pam, that uh, Sanchez is still so uptight that she hasn't spread her shoulders by now? Well, obviously it would have been tough to come on on the court today and carry on with the exact same manner that she did yesterday against Sabatini, but Steffi Groff is a great front runner. If she doesn't put her nose in this match soon, it could be over in no time. from everybody else, uh, Sanchez Vicario, as you look at Mike Estep, who's a rancher's coach, he's got some problems on his mind right now. She served a very high percentage of first serves in, but Graf, on the other hand, at 60% for the rest of the tournament, is at 71 now. We should explain that was not a twitch from Mike Estep, but it was just a nod of encouragement to a rancher. Oh, yeah. Serving for the first set now, Steffi Groff. As I mentioned, Arantxa Sanchez is not just a one-tournament player. She did well here last year, losing to Groff in the semis. The Italian, she lost to Sabatini, but she got to the finals. Mm -hmm. Then she won in the French Championships, and the Canadian, she beat Sabatini, lost to Navratilova oh. in the final. At the US Open, Sabatini beat her in three sets in the quarters. Solid year all round for Sanchez Vicario. Of course, Graf was a whole other story. She only lost two matches. Two matches last year and three the year before. Two of them uh, to Gabriela Sabatini. And two of them on this stadium court. the world's number one player has cruised through the first set six games live picture of mike estep who of course is the coach of one of the finalists pam shriver got a hold of him earlier today and said to him well do you coach or do you just encourage and everybody said 
who there's a rule against coaching and what, since I've been in coaching, I've made a, a rule to talk extensively prior to the match, and I give out written game plans, and we go over the uh, the plans hour, hour and a half, uh, full time in a, in a game plan. There is no way I could elaborate on that with signals if I wanted to, much less would I want to, because it could be confusing. All I'm doing up there is giving emotional support and giving her uh, the guts and the wherewithal to come up with the shot that she needs. and any game plan or strategy she can look in her bag she's got it written down on a piece of paper so she doesn't need to look at it from me now on this elaborate game plan that's planned for today with Groff, you want to let us in on that well it could be just encouragement but i think it's uh, enlightened encouragement let's put it that way because it sure looks like some of the including mike uh, sometimes you see coaches doing all kinds of nutty things out there I think it's uh, interesting that he comes up with a written game plan that she has it right there, so I guess she can just take it out and, and have a read. I've always felt that the smartest thing that somebody like Mike Estep could do would get with our professional statisticians. Oh, Mike is all over that stuff, but he's, he's very, very thorough and professional about that. I mean, I think they should all do it because there's so much to be learnt from, uh, from a statistician who really gets the stuff down, knows exactly what it means, can interpret it, and... Heck, if a guy can tell you what your uh, percentages are on a passing shot of your opponent, for example, what valuable information. Ooh. To break points for Gra, first game, second set, she won the first set easily. So what everyone was looking to be a close match might turn out to be a rout. She won the first set 6-1, one, one game to love behind the break of serving set two. She is on her way to what might be an outstanding match. Well, it's been for Steffi Groff in her last two matches. She's been averaging 19 errors per set. She's cut that in half in this very clean first set. You can see she's almost serving about 65%. She's even winners and unforced errors. That's been way off in, in the other matches. And as you can see, Sanchez Vicario just one winner. <laughs> Of course, she also hasn't lost a match. just the kind of point that she needed to land in had that been in uh, for a winner it could it could just loosen up a and, and get her a little bit more confident that one just missed big that's that's a little bit of bad luck for a there yep. when the Australian and in fact the last match that she played before this tournament was in February and she beat a rancher Sanchez are covering the final easily for indoors. One and two. It's just a different Steffi Groff out here today than we have seen the previous two days. I can't quite decide whether or not uh, Sanchez Vicario has even had a chance to really see how she's playing. Groff is making so many fewer unforced errors.
It must help Groff that she has so much respect for Sanchez Vicario. She knew she had to play this well today. to love and one set to love for the world's number one. Tonight here on ESPN at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, live coverage of our baseball room continued. Chris Everett retired, of course, from tennis earlier. And the uh, U.S. Open last year. Sanchez Vicario isn't feeling maybe a little bit too much pressure today. She shouldn't feel that much pressure because Groff is number one player in the world. But in the newspapers the last couple of days, there's been quotes from Arantxa saying she felt she could win this tournament. Sometimes that can put pressure on a player. Sanchez, she tried to establish herself at, at the net, and Groff just kept coming up with shot after shot to defeat her. Finally, that lob was well into the court. Talk about a one-sided score so far. He has loved 30, two games to love Groff's second set. She's only lost one game in the match. Chris Everett retired at the US Open. All it did really was open the doors for other champions to emerge, like Sanchez Picario. Casillas and Capriano. All it takes to make a champion is to win a few major tournaments, or even one in the case of Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, the French championship. But Cliff, Chris was still on the computer uh, until about a month or so ago. Uh, she was number four in the world, and she asked to be taken off right. of it. She didn't want to see herself plummet, you know, to number you know, 640 in the world or something. <laughs> Time she lost off the course, that loss was here last year. Break point, three of them. So three games to love and one set to love for Steffi Groff. She is on a roll and not making the mistakes that she has. Steffi Groff is just a couple of games away from her 57th consecutive win. Martina Navratilova has the all-time win streak with 74. She was finally stopped at the Australian in 84. She was going for a Grand Slam that year, if you remember. And she's at number two as well. Chris Everett stopped her at the 86 French. But if, if Steffi wins this one, she'll have 57. And if she gets the French Open, she's got a couple of tournaments before that, and wins the French, she'll tie Navratilova. She can surpass Navratilova in the first round of Wimbledon. That would be number 75 in a row for her. But wouldn't that be something? She gets all the way to the French final. Ties it at 74, wins her fourth straight Grand Slam event. That would be something. More than that, of course, it would be halfway to a Grand Slam. Number two. And if she plays like this for the next couple of months, <laughs> we'll all be watching her first round match at Wimbledon for the record. <laughs> Rod Laver has done it twice. That's all four majors in one year. Of course, he might have done it more often if he hadn't turned pro when he did back. He lost five good years. Indeed. He did it in 62, and then he lost five years. He did it again in 69. In 69 right. Imagine what he could have done in those five years. Well, I've talked to a lot of the guys on the tour about it, and it's not uh, a given that he would have won them all, of course, but... Uh, but it's my feeling that he would have won at least another one. Even in the years that he won the Grand Slams, there were so many close matches mm -hmm. that he eked out. Four 
Boy, I feel badly for Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. I mean, not only was she playing great coming into this match, but everybody was also, I'm sure, telling her that that Groff's form was way off and that she she would have all kinds of chances to do it again. She said she'd uh, watch Groff play a few matches and sort for herself. off the line that's why she got the bad bounce She's four games to love now there's marissa victoria sanchez and mother and her kid is so popular that last week at hilton head there was a crush of uh, autograph hounds going after um Arantxa. and her mom it really did get literally got crushed her ribs at it for a while they thought perhaps she had broken a rib or two but in fact they're just badly bruised these tennis tournaments are dangerous i know that Tennis would not, of course, be able to present great tournaments. And Dan Gill is the chairman and CEO of Bausch and Lom. A host of, really, a whole group of visitors from all over the country involved with this company. And by the way, they have signed on for three more years with Capital Sports to promote this Bausch and Lom championship. And Rancha now stands at 30 love. So she looks like she could hold serve here and get on the scoreboard in the second set. it's a combination it's never only one thing that Graf is not missing as she was she's also not being pressured to miss but you put those things together and it has been an awesome display from her so far first two matches here she lost one game per match has been tough to predict. We figured coming into this match that it would certainly be a close match and that Sanchez Vicario would have a heck of a chance of winning it, but all week long we've been a little bit wrong. The unpredictability. I think coming into this match it was Groff and Sabatini. I was an entire person off. I was going to say, but there's something really fun about unpredictability. Well, certainly, um, I, I thought Sabatini was going to make it to the final as well. I did not think Groff would lose this match, though. Break point. to try to win her first game of the second set. She's still at least in this game. It's this. This court, uh, it, it definitely is an attention getter when you when you lose confidence, it, it hurts you because the ball seems to fly some as against the slower European clay. It has hurt Graf these last two days, but if your confidence is good, then that's a beautiful surface to play. Graf has broken again. This match is very close to being over. Sure. That's the trophy that's at stake here and the $70,000 first prize, Amelia Island. The name was bestowed by Oglethorpe in honor of Princess Amelia, who is a daughter of George II of England. And the island's first recorded European visitor, by the way, was a Frenchman, Jean Ribot, May 3rd, 1562. He called it the Isle of May. Just across. 
across the um, river, really, from St. James River, from the great state of Georgia. Northeast Florida. Correction on the call. Now let's see whether he'll play two. Or whether he will judge that uh, Sanchez Vicari would have got to the return, because that's his decision. And Steffi's that's asking why for a serve. I think that's a good call from the man in the chair, Tom Cook, because uh, that uh, the call was so immediate that it could well have affected Sanchez Vicario's return. And that's his decision. sets that these two played before this match today. Steffi Graf had won three sets in a row by the scores of 6-1, 6-1, and 6-2. So if she wins this match, uh, she would have lost only five games in five sets. Sanchez Vicario and Mercedes Paz are in the women's doubles finals, by the way. And she didn't finish her semi-final doubles match last night till 8.30. One semi-final is the number one seed. For the Kirshen Zverev. 30 or two points from the match. She after her last two matches, Mary, I mean, very, very um, upset with herself in the way that she's played, but this will turn things around for her. Championship point. here in the area there were thunderstorm warnings actually just uh, across the St. James River but nothing we haven't seen anything and will not apparently championship point again it's the St. John's River isn't it not the St. James Graf has won it very easily 6-1 and 6-love only one game for Sanchez Vicario who Mary really felt like she had a chance, I think, going into this match. What a surprise. It's, a, it's an enormous surprise. Uh, all due credit goes to Steffi Graf. She just played a very controlled, you know, she just controlled her aggression for just the right moments. It's, it's as we thought she had to do. You know, just go right. for it. There's Mike Estev just sort of throwing up his hand saying, hey, you ha you're going to have days like that. And, and Arantxa knows that. She's had losses like this before. But this one really is a surprise just, just based on the on the form of both these players going into the match. Kind of changes the formula for women's tennis to some extent because you always have the feeling that while she's the number one player in the world, clearly, she is uh, to some extent anyway threatened by Sanchez Vicario, Celis Capriati and others. But not today. It was all Steffi Groff, easily won in love. We'll be back with more in a moment. This entire championship match, Steffi Groff winning it over Sanchez Vicario, 6-1, six, 6 love. The winner is with Pam Shriver on the court, Pam. Steffi, what, what was the difference between today's match and the previous two, besides the obvious ease of the win? What was the difference in your game? Well, I didn't make many mistakes, just first of all, and I waited patiently for the right shot. And um, I just felt much better. I had, I had the timing that I didn't have the last two days, and uh, I think I didn't have anything to lose either. So I was feeling very comfortable on the court. 
How soon do you know if you have your timing in a match? Well, you get it after the first couple of games. Uh, already in the morning I was playing much better than the last days before, but you, you feel it after like this, the first uh, three or four games you have already a telling. Now you didn't change rackets today. Did you like this one a little better? No, it was, the thing is, I had yesterday I was sweating so much, I think I've never sweated that much in my life. And um, I had to use each always in different rackets because I couldn't, uh, it, was, it was too wet uh, to take it. Now the w wind streaks up to 57, do you think much about that? <laughs> no, but I'm very happy that it continues and I didn't do too well the last two years, I mean, I, I didn't win. So I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to have tried it again and, and won. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Steffi. Cliff? Thanks a lot, Pam. Isn't it interesting? She says that she didn't have anything to lose. You hear that from a champion like Steffi Groff, who kind of gets your attention, or got mine anyway. She is the championship winner here of the Bausch & Lomb by 6-1, 6-love over Vicario Sanchez. Now let's go down to Bob Arix. He is the chairman of the tournament with Capital Sports. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And another great finals it was at a beautiful Amelia Island plantation. I think everybody will agree if there's any question in anyone's mind whether Steffi Graf is back, that's been answered today. So she'd come forward to receive her runner-up check. Arancha. Congratulations, Arancha. At this time, I'd like Jim Canale, president of Personal Products of Bausch & Lomb, to make the check presentation. Jim? Thank you, Bob. Grant, you've had a terrific tournament. On behalf of Bausch & Lomb, I'd like to uh, give you this check for $28,000 as runner-up to the singles tournament. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you all the sponsors, Bao Slum, Club General Foods, Capital Sports, and Amelia Island Plantation for a great job. Also the ball boys and the, and the best line, the people that call the lines. And uh, I have to say congratulations, Steffi, you play unbelievable today. I, I, I can understand why you play so well against me and all the rest of the week. <laughs> now, uh, okay, I'm very happy because I play a great tournament. I've been the number th three in the world, Gabriela Sabatini, and uh, I'd like to thank all the people, and uh, thank you very much, and see you next year. Thank you, Arantxa. I'd like to also bring forward the number one tennis player in the world, Steffi Graf, who's the third, the third time winner of the Bausch & Lomb Championship. Steffi, come on forward, please. You're absolutely fabulous today, Steffi. Congratulations. At this time, once again, Jim Canale to make the winner's presentation check. Jim? Thank you, Bob. Steffi, you've proved again that while you're the champion, you're a world-class champion, and it's great to have a world-class company sponsoring this event. We're going to be here for another three years at least, sponsoring this Amelia Island uh, Bausch & Lomb tournament. We hope you can come back and defend your championship. Here's a check. Terrific tennis. Here's a check for $70,000. Congratulations. Stevie, on behalf of Bausch & Lomb and Capital Sports at Amelia Island, I'd like to present to you with this trophy, which is symbolic of this championship, and I, you could not have been a more deserving champion. You're still number one in everybody else's eyes, including ours. Congratulations. Well, first of all, there's nothing in this uh, envelope. <laughs> Anyway, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, after the last, after the last, after the last two years, I'm um, I'm happy to to play the way I was playing today and uh, to pull it off as a, as the winner again. And uh, I didn't have uh, the easiest last two matches, but I was 
I got to feel a little bit better today. And uh, a lot of credit also to Arancha. I mean, she had a very great, I mean, a great win yesterday against Gabriela. And uh, it's not always not very easy to come off such a big win and then play the next day. So I'm, I also want to thank all the sponsors, uh, Bausch and Lomb, and uh, again, Amelia Island for for the great staying here always. And uh, I heard that this tournament is bringing like five or six million to this to this place. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Anyway, I'm, I had a great time coming back, and I'm I'm very happy to after that layoff, the injury I had, I, it was the first time I played here, and I hope I come back next year. Thank you. Thank you, Steffi. Well, she's playing awfully well. She did at least today. 6-1, 6-love in the championship match over Sanchez-Vicario.